Our rational minds may well struggle with the biblical truth that God is a trinity, three in one and one in three. And it should be no wonder that many Christians call it a mystery. Even the Apostle Paul wrote, the mystery of godliness is great. But whatever your level of understanding of doctrine of the Trinity, one thing you can know for sure, the triune God is unchangeably committed to including you in the wonderful fellowship of the life of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are not three gods, only one, and that God, the only true God, the God of the Bible, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we might say, mutually indwell one another. That is, the life they share is perfectly interpenetrating. In other words, there's no such thing as the Father apart from the Son and the Spirit. There's no such thing as the Son apart from the Father and the Spirit. And there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit apart from the Father and the Son. That means that when you are in Christ, you are included in the fellowship and the joy of life of the triune God. It means the Father receives you and has fellowship with you, as he does with Jesus. It means that the love that God once and for all demonstrated in the incarnation of Jesus Christ is no less than the love the Father has always had for you and always will. It means that God has declared in Christ that you belong to him, that you are included, and that you matter. That's why the Christian life is all about love, God's love for you and God's love in you. Jesus said, By this shall all people know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. When you are in Christ, you love others because the Father and the Son live in you through the Spirit. In Christ you are freed from fear, from pride, and from the hatred that prevents you from enjoying the life of God. And you are free to love others the way God loves you. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one, which means that there is no act of the Father that is not also the act of the Son and the Holy Spirit. For example, our salvation comes through the unalterable will of the Father, who is unswervingly committed to including us in the joy and the fellowship shared by the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The Father sent the Son, who for our sakes became incarnate, was born, lived, died, and was resurrected, and then, as a human being, ascended to the Father's right hand as Lord and Savior and mediator, having purified the sins of humanity. Then the Holy Spirit was sent to sanctify and perfect the church in eternity. That means your salvation is a direct result of the Father's ever-faithful love and power proven incontrovertibly through Jesus Christ and ministered to us by the Holy Spirit. It's not your faith that saves you. It's God alone, Father, Son, and Spirit. That's who saves you. And God gives you faith as a gift to open your eyes to the truth of who He is and who you are, His beloved child. I'm Joseph Tkach, speaking of life.